about two weeks ago, I put out an episode regarding student leadership and uh, the stress that these student leaders face because they often have not only a lot more on their plate, but they often have a, a higher standard that they hold themselves to. Therefore, that's why they're student leaders. And what I told you I would do, which we're doing today, is doing an entire episode on the phone and more importantly, how we audit our phone. How do we actually look at what's going on? How is it taking up our time, energy, and attention. And this is uh, four simple steps that you can teach your students and have them go through it as a simple exercise. The phone, we, I mean, we <laughs> we remember at a time where, you know, we didn't really have phones. I mean, I myself didn't have my first phone until I was in high school. And when I say phone, I mean, it had like nine buttons and it could make a phone call and that was about it. The extent of a game was playing Snake, which was a line chasing a dot. It was primitive. And now we have this insane thing, which is unbelievable. But not only do we have this thing, we have so many companies that are trying to insert themselves into this thing to take up the time and attention and, and the emotional bandwidth of our students. And not that they're doing it necessarily maliciously, but it's how they make money. So we have to understand that. So the first thing we're gonna audit together is the utilities that you use. So the utilities that the student use on their phone is kind of a gateway, right? For instance, the biggest one and the biggest issue that I think we've all had in our life is using the alarm clock on your phone. Why is this an issue? Well, let's walk through it. The alarm goes off. We are usually getting up way earlier than we are naturally inclined to do. So we're fighting against that. And we're, it is middle of winter. It's warm and cozy in your bed. The second you know those covers come off, you're gonna be freezing and you're gonna have to go to school, which you may not really be into at that moment and all these things fighting against you. Either one, you're gonna hit snooze, which is another issue for another day, but two, if you do unlock the phone and start to wake up, what you're gonna do is try to get some quick satisfaction. You're gonna try to get some type of um, moment to ease you into the day. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna go on social media. So you're gonna take your phone and you're gonna start doom scrolling. And then like 20 minutes later, you're either gonna be running late to school or you're going to be in a mindset that is pretty negative and fairly depressed or both. So that's one utility that I would suggest using either, like I use Lady A, Alexa, please don't say anything. <laughs> or now she's playing music, awesome. Or um, you can use any type of smart device, or you can just literally buy like a fifteen dollar alarm clock from Amazon. They still make them, I promise. So that's one utility. We also want to think about our calendar. We want to think about the Notes app, and we want to think about these things because when I say think about them, I say ask yourself: Is there maybe a better system? Is there a better way to avoid having to pick up the phone? Because yes, it is very a convenience in many ways, but every time you go to pick up your phone is just another moment where you could be sucked into either a, a social app or, you know, texting with somebody that you don't necessarily need to be spending your time with or, or whatever it may be. You're just distracted, which leads me into my second point of auditing your phone. And that is the time you spend. And this is scary. This is scary for everybody, not just for students, but for adults. We spend so much time in this device. Now, I will give us some leeway here. If, for instance, you are uh, noticed that your highest social app uh, spent is YouTube, but you're not actually watching the videos, you're just listening to them. So you've got podcasts playing in the background and that's just kind of how you listen to podcasts. That's fine. But at the same time, remember, everything that you're doing is, if you're doing something and you're trying to multitask, you're pulling your attention away from the actual more important task at hand and you're separating them because you, it is impossible to actually multitask. 
But every phone, no matter whether it's iOS or Android, will have some type of reporting and some type of time spent uh, even tracking how many times you pick up the phone, how many unlocks or whatever, and specifically time on each app. And that is really scary. It's not super scary about the day. It gets a little more scary about, you know, per week. But here's what we need to do is we need to take all those weeks, say if you do it for four weeks on average and come to an average time spent per week, just add them up, add them up per week, you know, four weeks a month, 12 months a year. And you can say to your student like, okay, you've spent how many thousands of hours on your phone? Did that result in a positive end, end result? Or do you, do you feel any better as a human being because of it? Or is this an enlightening period where you're realizing, whoa, I, I'm just wasting so much of my time on this stupid box maybe I should be more cognizant of that. The third thing we have to audit is our social media. The social media apps that we have on our phone, we have to really ask yourselves whether or not I need to be on all these platforms. At the time of this recording, I am a 35 year old adult and I could tell you I would, would not be on social media at all if it wasn't for what I do here, if I wasn't putting out my own content. I, I can feel myself, especially when it comes to TikTok, being so addicted to the app because of its, I mean, addictive nature, uh, whether it's TikTok, Instagram Reels, these video uh, platforms that, that are short form video. And it is so extremely easy to swipe and continue to find what you're looking for and just kind of shut off for a while. But if you notice how long you actually do this for, it is, it is wild. Um, and when you really think about what's happening, I'll give you an example. If I was to tell you a story, well, if I was to tell you a story about my, my half brother, so my half brother's name is Kyle. And well, before I tell you about my half brother, I have to tell you about my dad and my stepmom. Well, actually, before I tell you about my stepmom, I really should tell you about where they grew up. So. See what I'm saying? See what I'm doing right now? That's every three to five seconds, you swiping to another video, you swiping to another video, swiping to, like your brain is just trying to desperately hang on to something and get in some type of uh, homeostasis or, or flow state for that matter. And it's impossible because you're just almost shutting that part of your brain off and you're just going into this little fantasy world and it, and it feels good in the moment. And but then afterwards you realize like, whoa, what, where did the time go? What do I do? And nine times out of the 10, we don't feel good when we pull ourselves out of that black hole, if you will. So simply ask yourself, do I really need to be on every social media platform? What is maybe the one or two most important to me? I can keep those, or maybe I should ditch the rest of them. And lastly, the most important thing that we have to audit and our students have to audit on their phone is the communication, the people that we communicate with and whether or not those people are are fueling our positivity or taking from us, right? Or, or putting us in a negative state. And the easiest way to do that is take your phone and open up your, your text messages and see the last, say, 10 texts. And I'm not talking about the, you know, six digits that you need to have a uh, two-part authentication login somewhere. I'm talking about the people, right? Um, are those people that are those relationships, not necessarily those texts, but are those relationships giving you uh, positive energy to your life or taking energy from you? And the question that these students need to ask themselves is, do I need to be more selective with the people I communicate with? Do I need to take an audit on who I spend my time with? Because we all know we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And that goes double when it comes to a maturing young high school student. They are, they really are the average of the most, the, the five people they spend the most time with. I remember myself, I was three full years of high school, nine, 10th, and 11th, I had, um, I was I was lucky enough to be part of I think every single 
group, every single social class. I was, uh, I had some of my best friends were the the cool football players, right? So I had access to all the popular kids. I was part of that crew, and then I was part of the drama club, and I was part of the music world, and you know, I had these. I was pretty much friendly with everybody. And then by my senior year, there was a group of people who, today, if I were to stay, if I stayed close with them, which I'm not anymore. I can still tell you that those people were more true friends to me. They were more, um, I had maybe some deeper connections with them versus surface level fun, which is fine too. But that's why my senior year, I kind of started transitioning and spending a little bit more time with that group um, that I've known throughout the years, but I never really hung out with them that much. And I didn't have to necessarily audit my phone. I just audited my life. But the text in your phone is a great opportunity to just take a look and see, do I need to spend more time with these awesome people or do I need to spend less time and cut certain people out of my life? So to wrap up, the four things we have to audit on our phone, the utilities we use, the alarm, the calendar, the notes, or whatever, any other app, the time we spend on our phone, that's a big one, the social media apps, whether or not we need them all, and of course, the relationships and the communication that we use via this phone. Do we need to make a change in our life? So that's it. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's audit. I hope you can use this little exercise with your students. I think it's really important as technology moves, uh, continues to grow because we're not going backwards, right? We're This is here forever. It is, it is on us. It will only integrate with us even more, especially with artificial intelligence on its rise. We need to make sure our students know how to stay on top of the technology and not necessarily have technology use them. So if you like today's video, then please hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below, not for your student's sake, but for your personal sake, which of these four things that you will audit on your phone do you think are the most important to you? If you like today's video, then I think you will enjoy this one right over here.